Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. This is where I fix stuff and hopefully you learn how to do it too. So I have two amplifier modules here. These are both identical. Uh, basic 400, basic series by amp active speakers. So these come out of uh, PA speakers which I've built in amplifiers. These are the amplifiers. Uh, by amp means they have two amplifiers in each one but that's not that they're stereo how these active speakers work you'll have a bass speaker maybe 12 or 15 inch usually and a horn speaker and there's two amplifiers on here so one of the amplifiers drives the bass speaker the other one drives the horn speaker and this will have an active crossover so this will basically divide the input signal, the music, into low and high frequencies and send them to the appropriate speaker. Okay, so we have two of them. Now, they're both faulty, but one has a very basic fault. So this one, for whatever reason, has the LEDs missing. I'll zoom down and you can see what I mean. So on this one, there should be two LEDs here, which just come through the panel. So you have a power on LED and you have a limit protection LED, okay? For whatever reason the LEDs are missing, the guy who brought them into me said that that's the problem with this one. If we look at the other one, you'll see the two LEDs are there. So he basically tells me that it needs two LEDs but apart from that he says this one is working so should be a simple thing to fit the LEDs I don't have them he didn't bring them and then this one he says will work if we look down this side then you can see that this has an integrated circuit this will be a complete mono amplifier maybe 20 30 watts or something like that and that will drive the horn speaker most likely then it looks like we have two possibly driver transistors one large one here you can see then we have two more of these again that has five legs down there there's five there. there's a five here no, these are definitely two driver transistors. There's three legs on each. I can see them. Okay, so we have one output device. We have something I'm not quite sure what these are. I guess they're quite possibly a couple of diodes in there. And then looks like the same sort of thing here. And then the other output device. That's what we have. I'll replace the LEDs in this one, and then this should work, as he says. Now, the other one, which is identical, he tells me just blows the fuses. So, as soon as you power this up, the fuse blows, okay? The fuse blows. There's some fuses on the board, by the looks of it, yeah, down here and here. So, this is blowing fuses. So, I'm guessing this has a short somewhere. To start off with then, I'll replace the LEDs on the other one. It looks like I could fit the LEDs in here and manage to solder down there. But I think the easiest way is probably just to take this panel off. It doesn't look too difficult. So we have a couple of screws. I've noticed on this one that the plastic ring that should fit around the jack socket is missing. So I'll see if I can find one in comparison to this one. Yeah, it also looks like one of them has had a replacement socket fitted here. If you compare the two, that is different. So I guess these have been worked on before. But I think the front panel will come off fairly easily. So let's try that. If it's a problem, I'll do a slightly more fiddly soldering job. So there's a screw here. And there's another one here. Okay. What else do we have? Okay. 
something is still holding it on. It's wobbling about. Oh, there's another another screw up here. But is that holding? Yeah. There's a screw up here. Does it come off easily now? Looks like it's held on by the volume control actually. Just a knob on here and possibly a yeah. A one of those. Okay. Now let's see. Yes, this will now lift off. There's a few wires holding it in place, but that's not going to be a problem, I don't think. Looks like this is some sort of previous uh, uh, bit of soldering. I mean, these come to me from a guy on the other side of the island, the one with the wild coast and all the huge waves, very spectacular and beautiful. And he does some amount of repair work himself, but anything he can't handle basically, he then brings to me. So I'm kind of like the repairer of the last resort on this island apparently. Okay, there. We can easily get to the LEDs now, so let's just fit a couple of LEDs first. The PCB is marked K, K, so that will be the cathode. So the positive voltage will be on the, the anode. And they seem to be both going in the same way round. Now, if I look at the other one, if you look down inside the LED, if you like, you have on all LEDs, really, like a, a thin terminal, and one like a big hoof there, yeah? And on this one, it looks like it's in the other way round, which is a little bit strange so i'm going to see if i can actually just test these ones with my meter i have um some replacements this looks like it, it's probably a pull to be quite honest it's been desoldered from somewhere and the green one is also a pull taken from something so let's see if we can just figure out which way round they actually are going so i'm going to put this onto diode mode and you can see it, yeah, we can still see the LEDs. So let's see what happens with these. This is the green one. If the cathode is where it says K, then I should put the red lead onto the other pin, the anode, and it hopefully will light up. Well, it reads. And let me see, is it actually lighted up? You not be able, might not be able to see, It'll probably very dim. Yeah, it is lighting up. You probably can't see it on the camera. But it is actually lighting up. If I look directly down, I think, I think you might just see it, okay? And it reads, so... That, in fact, is the way round it goes. And the red should be the same way round. This should light up. Okay. Yeah, that does definitely light up. I, th I think you might be able to see that's lit up. So they are, in fact, the way they say they are. Let's look at our uh, replacement ones. So this is one of them. Find which end is the positive. Okay, we'll try this and see if it lights up. Well, it's reading, but I'm not quite sure if it's lighting. Let me have a look, see if you can see it. Well, it's just shorting together. It is lighting, but it's very dim on this meter. Yeah. Uh, 
It is definitely lighting up though. So that's the way it goes in the board. Look at our green one. The same way around. No, it's not actual fact. The opposite way around, which is why they looked opposite on the other one. Well, actually, that seems to read open. Let's go the other way. So that means that way, so it's the same way around. Let's see if it lights up. Yeah, that's lighting. I think you can actually see that's lighting. So that also goes that way around. With like the, the small internal part to that side, yeah? To the left. Okay, so I've replaced the LEDs, one slightly more further out than the other. But it's fine, yeah, it's fine, they're working. So we have that done. This one, then, I should be able to power this up. The fuses shouldn't blow, it should... If I put my current limiting light bulb on, we should see it draws a little bit of power and then effectively the lamp goes out because without any input and there's no speakers attached, they should draw very little power. So we'll try that and then we'll do the same with the bad one and compare this. I've set the current limiter on. I'll just put the camera where you can see that. So the current limiter is up there underneath here. Yeah, that's the light bulb. It's set to limit. So we can switch the power on and we'll see what happens. So I'll switch the power on and then we'll switch the amplifier module on and watch the light bulb. Bright then dim, okay? And almost off. So that's normal. So what happened is the transformer via the bridge rectifier charged up the main capacitors. So while that happened, the light came on and then went dimmer and then once they are charged, there's literally nothing to draw any power. So that's what a good amplifier does with no input. And especially with no speakers attached to it. Let's look at the other one. So this is the one that blows fuses. Well, the first thing we'll do, actually, is just make sure the fuses are good. So let's have a look. This one, I think, easiest is just to take it out. Okay. And it, oh, okay, so it's kind of captive, yeah. I see. Usually the thing, the whole thing comes out. This one doesn't. So there is a fuse in there. Is it blown? I think it might be. Let's just put the test meter on it. Okay. Obviously you can't see it well like that. Try that, yeah. <laughs> Try that. Is the fuse any good? No, fuse is blown. Meter's working. Fuse is blown. So it's the main fuse that blows. At least that one, if not others as well. Let's take this out. Looks like it pushes out one way or another. Yeah, comes out this way. Yeah, our fuse is visibly gone. Let me see what rating this is. This is a 2.5 amp. So I'll replace that with a good one first. One thing you have to keep in stock is fuses. Yeah, these are uh, 20 mil fuses. This is containing a variety of other types of fuses, SMD and whatever, but you really need to keep fuses in stock. Uh, and I have them in various ratings, so they're all kind of organised. Yeah, 2 amp, I need 2.5. This drawer I think goes up to about 6 amp, that's 1.6, so 1.6. 1 amp slow blow. And because fuses come in many different types, you need to keep many different fuses. There's no other real way around that. So I need to have a look now and see if I actually have any 2.5 amp fuses. 6 amp. 2 amp. And would you believe it? In this drawer, I don't. Let me look in the other drawer, because this is the higher rated ones, yeah. 5 amp. 
4 amp, 3.15 amp, and 10 pieces of something, yeah, 10 pieces of something, what are these? I hope these are 2.5s. Yep, those are the 2.5 amp fuses. So this is what I'm saying. If you don't have fuses in stock, you have to order them every time you've got something to repair that needs a fuse, and it's just far more hassle than it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> far more work than it needs to be. Oh, in fact, it is actually more there now. It's just so fake, you probably can't read it. 2.5 amp. Okay. Right. So, now I've uh, lectured you all about fuses. Let's put the fuse in. Your best bet is to buy a whole kit off them from AliExpress, yeah. Just buy, you know, a whole bag of them or something. There are two more fuses on the item itself, which are here and here. Let's see if these are gone, because this might tell us something. Okay, meter's working. No, that's okay. I mean, this meter isn't exactly zeroing properly, but they read okay by the looks of it. Yeah, reads the same both ends. And they look okay. This will have a positive and negative supply rail, I would think. So, hence the fact we have four capacitors, two on each rail. We have coming from the main transformer here, you can see one black and the two yellow, which is probably the power rails. And then we have two more red ones, which is some other voltage rail. So it looks like it's just blowing the input fuse and not these output fuses. That makes me wonder if there's a fault on this somewhere very near the front end of it. So I'm just going to have a look to see if I have any shorts on the bridge rectifier. I can get to that quite easily on the other side of the board. And I'm pretty sure that this will be the bridge rectifier. And I don't read a short there. Okay, there's no short on that. Okay. So what we'll do is we will power this one up with the light bulb in series. Okay. And let's see what it does. So switch off. Power's in. You can see the light bulb. Let's see what the bulb does. Comes on bright and stays bright. So that stopped the fuse from blowing. So this clearly has a short circuit somewhere. Let's see if we can find out where it is. Well, the most likely place to be short is going to be the output devices. The highest power devices are the most likely to have a short. And we have a good one to compare with, which is very good. So let's have a look. I can see there's a device here with the three fat legs and one there with the three fat legs. So those are probably the output device. Let's have a look. That's the end one. And then this one. Okay. So what our meter tells us. Well, nothing short there. See if there's a meter here, you know, leads far out. Okay, so let's see. Mm, meter's working. Nothing short there. There's a bit of voltage somewhere. Nothing short there. I don't see any shorts around here. Try the other one. No, I don't see any shorts around the output devices. There's probably MOSFETs. But we have a short somewhere.
So I don't see any short circuits at the moment, but something is acting like a short circuit. Um, let's have a look. There's another bridge rectifier down here, so maybe that one has a short. Which is here on our board. Is there a short here? No, I don't see a short there. I'm pretty sure the two input ones are from the transformer. Makes sense. I can tell, basically, if we just go to diode mode. <laughs> if it's a good bridge rectifier from the two AC terminals, if we put the positive on them, we should see a diode junction to one of the ends. That end. But it's not a diode junction. That's a, there's obviously something with some charge in here, a capacitor. That's the diode junction stopped at 520. And this should be the same. Okay. And then if we go with the black on the two middle ones, we should see a diode junction through the terminal. Again, there's some capacitors charging. Okay, we'll see if it stops about 520. That's a diode junction. And that's a diode junction, okay. Because I've got the black on the middle ones. This is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. So this should read open. But it might read something with a B, obviously, a circuit in here. Yeah, it's climbing up and climbing up. Capacitor charging somewhere. So that sort of reads okay. Let's look at this bridge rectifier. So again... Red on one of the middle should read a diode junction to one end or the other. And the diode junction, we all know because it will stop at about 5.20. There, okay. And the same from the other one. Diode junction. So this is the positive end of the bridge rectifier. Then with the black in the middle, we should see diode junctions to the other end, which is the negative end. Yeah, something's charging the other way. Okay. Stopped again, so it's definitely a good diode junction. Okay. So this is the negative end of the bridge rectifier. And this is across the bridge rectifier. So there's definitely no short. So wherever the short is, it's not a faulty bridge and I can't see it. It doesn't appear to be a faulty output device either, but there's some more diodes and things down here. I think probably we're going to have to get this heat sink off and then we can have a good look around to see where the problem is with this. Okay, this looks like it's not going to be too difficult. We need a, uh, I think it's a star shaped end, but if we undo the earth and these three, this will come off. The one bolt through there, that will come off. And then I think it's just the metal bracket holding the heat sink on. And I don't think there's anything else. Oh, yeah, a couple of screws in the bottom. So let me take this off. Okay, I have it off now. We can actually see what we have. So we have two rather strange devices with five legs on. SAP16. Yeah, they're both the same. SAP16. So we need to find a data sheet for that to see what it actually is. Then we have two look like MOSFETs. Look very much like MOSFETs. Yeah, IRF, that's a MOSFET. That's another one. Let me see if I can actually see the part numbers on them, I'll tell you. Okay. You can see it now, I think. So this is IRFP140N. Yeah, you see it. IRFP140N. Is it on the same? It's actually uh, here. Yeah, that's one. Bend it slightly. Let's have a look. This one's IRFP. Is that 9140? Yeah, 
I have to take my magnifier. IRFP 9140M. And this one again. IRFP 140N. So I think one is an N channel and one is a P channel MOSFET. I'll make a note of those numbers. We can look up in a moment. Then we have these two. What are these? What's an LM337? That is a negative voltage regulator. In this one, it's going to be a 317. I'm guessing. Hard to read. It's a little bit of gun, Johnny's. Well, it makes sense it was an LM317, which is a positive voltage regulator. Let me try the magnifier, see if I can actually see it. Yeah, that is actually an LM317. I can see it in the magnifier. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. But that's what it is. So we have a negative and a positive voltage regulator there. And then the last one is going to be an amplifier. Very hard to read the marking, but I will have a look under the magnifier again. LM3886T. Okay, I think you can probably just see it now. Actually, there's a glare off it. LM3886T. Okay, let's look at some data sheets. Here is the first one then, IRFP140N, N-channel MOSFET. So this is obviously one of the output devices for the base speaker, I would say. Okay, standard pin amp gate at its end range source. So we have that, and then we have the IRFP9140N, which I'm pretty sure we're going to find as a P-channel. MOSFET but complementary so basically the same wattage the same amps and currents but P channel it says it's actually a hex FET but you notice all the ratings are in minus amps yeah so this is definitely a P channel device so we have that and here you see all the ratings are in positive volts so this is N channel. In fact, this actually says N channel, and that thing calls itself a hex FET. The other way you can tell is actually the direction of the diode that you see here in the symbol. There, pointing outwards towards the source as a P channel, and pointing inwards towards the gate as an N channel. So we know that. So they're just a complementary N and P channel, one on the positive supply, one on the negative supply. What else do we have? We have our uh, SAP 16, SAP 16. I don't know what this device actually is, but temperature compensation diodes. Is that the thing? Yeah, the thing with five legs. So this basically contains some diodes, that's uh, the best we can say at the moment. Built-in emitter resistor, Darlington. Uh, that was a little... Uh... Although he says it's diodes, if you look at the equivalent circuit, it's blurred on this data sheet for some reason. But it's like a Darlington transistor, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five pins on it. So it's a kind of a Darlington transistor thing, and we have two of those. I'm not sure I can easily test them, but we can have a look if we need to. The last one, then, is the LM3886T, which I'm pretty sure we can say is going to be 
an amplifier. Now I have that number wrong, which is 3886T. 3886T, high performance 68 watt audio amplifier. So this will be the amplifier for the horn speaker, okay? And there's a typical application, there's a pinout. So now we know what we have, we need to try and figure out where the short is. Do we actually have a short or do we have a situation where one of the output devices is effectively being turned on permanently so it acts like a short? Let's see if we can find anything. Well, a good place to start is going to be on the power rails to this amplifier. From the data sheet, it was pins four and five. This is pin one. There's like a little square thing there. So in the zigzags, so one, two, three, four, five, okay? Five, you can actually see, it goes to here which is the output of the LM317. I'm sure that's the positive supply. No shorts in the LM317. And I'm guessing 4, which is there, probably goes to the output of this one, which I think is on pin 2 on these. Yeah, negative regulator output is on pin 2. Again, there's no shorts to ground. We can actually now look on ground on it here anyway which was one two three four five six i think it was six or seven they connected together anyway so this should be the ground pin if it's ground the middle pin of this will probably be actually no it won't be ground because it's a variable regulator but i guess if i go to one of the um yeah where i've gone to is actually the black weed here in fact he says ground by it okay so so that's ground got the connection right and then from four and five there's no shorts we've got no shorts to ground here no shorts there okay these voltage regulators no shorts around them now the output devices Well, short. There shouldn't be a short to ground anyway. This one's got a good connection. Do I have a good ground? You have a good connection. I'm back on the uh, here, which I know is ground. So, from the MOSFETs to ground, there's no short. And from this MOSFET to ground, there's no short. These are going to be a bit hard to test, these diode things. But there's no short. Let's see how we're going to try and figure this out. I think the first thing we'll do is power it back up again and look at the voltages around these devices, okay? So I think we're going to find that two of the pins are basically connected together. No, no, yeah, I thought those two are looks like they connected together unless it was a capacitor charging. No, nothing obviously connected together there. I was thinking that the two drains or the two sources will be connected together and go into the speaker terminal, but it doesn't seem to be the case. I, mean, I don't. I could fa try and find a schematic for this, but let's have a look. So we'll connect the power via the light bulb again, which is going to limit the current in this. And I want to see what voltages I see around these devices. Okay. I mean, it's looking like and I could be wrong that basically something is switching one of these output devices on. Basically, just before I power it up. So have a quick look around these diodes as well. Well, that reads like a diode. That reads like a diode, okay? There's nothing much else on this side of the board. 
Who are the two bridge rectifiers? There were some chips on the back of it. So it's possible some fault here is switching effectively one of the output devices on. Okay, let's have a look. Power's on, the light bulb. So the light bulb's on bright, okay? That's going to stop anything going bang. Let's have a look. So we should have a bit of voltage coming in. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. So minus. Minus. So I'm not seeing anything particularly around there, yeah. And yet we still have this apparently short condition. Okay, let's have a think where this short's likely to be. Let's remove these two output devices. If the light still comes on, we know the current isn't flowing through there, okay? We could do the same with this, which is going to be a bit more fiddly. But let's remove these first. So we'll take the output devices out, and then we'll try and power it up. Basically, the idea here is that we have current flowing somewhere, a lot of it. And I want to try and figure out where the current's going. Okay, so we can take these out. If I can stop the current flowing, so the thing will power up, I can then measure voltage on the gate here, for example, see if one of them has been turned hard on when it shouldn't be, or something like that's happening. If it still lights up bright without these in, then we know the fault is elsewhere. I've removed as much solder as I can from them, but they're not coming off easily. So I'm going to try using a bit of hot air from the rear. Um, so we'll just get hold of the actual device. Okay. Hot air from the rear on the pins. And hopefully this will just come out now. I put leaded solder on there, so it should actually be solder before the surface mount pots in the back do. But what I'll probably do, actually to make it easier, is I'll add some fresh leaded solder and then it should pull out quite easily. So, just get a bit of fresh solder. This then should melt before the lead free solder does. I'll just do the same with the other one. Okay. And we'll try it now. Okay. Get hold of it and warm it up. I shouldn't need to pull on this once the solder melts, it should just come out. Taking a bit of heat, but... PCB didn't like it very much. Holds a bit further back. Proving very difficult. Tell us how many. I can't imagine I'm sinking much heat into here, but yeah, it's coming now. Don't do the PCB. Come down that side of it as well. The middle pin doesn't want to come. Uh, other two are melted. Okay, we have it. Other one. Same technique.
obviously didn't want to get too much heat down to those big capacitors but I'm kind of angling in towards the board a little bit Yeah. Coming loose. Again, the middle pin is the one that it doesn't want to go off. Okay. Out. Let them cool down a bit. While those parts are cooling down and my hot air wants to switch off and this is why I overheated the board slightly, I heard it, that's why I moved away from it. Okay. We're done. I mean this is only a, a double sided board fortunately. I actually heard that, that's why I came away from it. Um, let's go again on here. Okay, much easier to do this while the board's still hot. Okay, while I have these unsoldered, I may as well test them. I don't believe for one moment there's anything wrong with either of them, but it makes sense to do it. So we'll just uh, give this one a check. I mean, bear in mind, one is N channel and one is P channel. So we need to put them back in the right way round. You should make a note of where they came from. I have the recording to refer back to. You know, even if you're not making YouTube videos, I think probably actually recording what you're doing is probably a good idea. It's surprising actually how much that's helped me on some repairs. I can just re the recording. As I watch the recording, I often figure things out. Okay, let's give it that one. That's the Peach channel, yeah. So as I expected, they're okay. Let's see now if we still have the excessive current flowing. The PCB is nice and clean. That's where I managed to damage it. Too much heat. It is Friday afternoon. That must be the reason why. But being a double-sided PCB, it's not going to cause any problems, fortunately. Let's put some power on it. I'll swing the camera back over so you can see the lamp so the lamp is actually there okay this is why the light bulb is so useful for this sort of work so we can plug it in I have it switched on here I'll just switch the mains on and let's see what it does now it's still bright on so that tells us that the problem isn't in the output device, but something else is drawing a lot of current. The question is, what? Let's see. Yeah, let's try the thermal camera. Actually, no, just before that, I can see two more diodes down here. So that's another possibility. I normally, if you've got a short, it's a power device. We've checked this one and this one. We've taken those out of the circuit. It could be this amplifier. But let's just check these two diodes. Let's see what we have. You can hear the continuity. If you get a single bleep on my meter in diode mode, it is just a diode junction, okay? I can't easily get onto them at all. It is switched off at the mains, but I won't plug this as well. Let's just go behind them. So the two diodes are there. Do I have a short? No, it's like a diode junction. Another one be the other way. Can't easily read them. I can probably get it from this side actually. So get to this end of this diode with the red lead that's a diode junction one bleep on my meter yeah whereas that is a short here's the other one so 
This is the positive end on this one, the cathode, sorry, the anode. Can we get across this one? Well, he either can't get onto it, or it's really open. I think it goes to here, to ground. Yeah, one bleep. That's the, going to the earth terminal, actually, you can see where it goes, so that's not short. The next likely thing is going to be this. Well, it could be a capacitor, as I say. Thermal camera is definitely going to save us a bit of time. So nothing's getting warm that I can see. But there again, the lamp is on bright, so that's dissipating like 60 watts, and this is dissipating practically zero. So let's try another way. Let's see if we can figure out which output of the transformer has the short. So if we disconnect these two red ones and we power it up with just the yellow and the black, if the light bulb still lights up, we know the problem's on this circuit. Okay, let's have a look. Well, the bulb's on bright. So that didn't help. Let's take this one off. So this is the other output from the transformer. Yeah, what happens now? Well, the bulb is on bright, so therefore the problem is not on the output of this transformer. Is there anything else it can be? So on the input, we have the switch, which selects the voltage, and we just have the on-off. Yeah. And the fuse is no, like varistors or anything on here that's looking like the problems the transformer like a shorted turn let's have a look so these are your four input wires okay the switch is definitely set to 240 do you have a short across the drive and neutral but if it means low resistance, it's going to be the transformer. Let's have a look at this one compared to the other one. So, here is our multimeter. Okay. So, let's go to ohms range, normal ohms range. Okay. So, let's check across the live and neutral coming in. Well, there's no short. That's that side of the switch, okay. If I'm making a contact, let's have a look. Can we get onto these somewhere else? I mean, there's like little, uh, obviously, plastic covers, like silicone covers on here. I mean, I, I think, I'm sure I'm in there on that one. Let's get on the other one. Okay, I have a connection now. So I'm reading. about seven or eight ohms and the only thing I can be reading there you would think is the actual primary of the transformer let's look at the other one it's a little bit harder to get to because I have all this on but let's see so this is here let me get to the other terminal. I can get onto it. Not easily. Sure I'm on that one. Maybe if I actually poke down the end of it. I can make a connection this way. No. Let me see if I can get a good connection on it. I'll go down this way, okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm on there. What resistance do I see? Well, this reads open, but the switch is, yeah, the switch is off. I put the switch in the on position. About the same. So the resistance on the input of the transformer reads the same. 
How about the output of the transformer? So we have the two yellow ones. That means 0.6, it's low, yeah. How about the two red ones? One point two. Let's get the other one. I'll just disconnect these. Okay, what am I reading? Yellow ones. Oh, one point three. Yeah, on this one. No point five. Duff transformer, guys. Do on the red ones. Two point three. Mm. A bit lower. Well, the only thing I can say is we've got a tough transformer. That will be some shorted turns in the transformer. And the shorted turn basically becomes a secondary, which draws a lot of power. So I'm sure this has got a burn type transformer. I might be able to see it a little better on my other own meter. It's a little bit more sensitive. In fact, I'll use this. This is my million meter. Okay. So we'll go on to the 20 ohms range. We'll just stick this into here. We'll stick this into the other end. And that's reading 0 0.15 ohms, okay? Yellow to yellow. Let's look at the working one. Yellow to yellow. Yeah, you can see it. You can see it, guys. Need do no more. So this, in fact, has a faulty transformer, okay? Nothing more to say about that. The problem with this now is getting one. Um, well, it has lots of voltage markings, I'll show you. Okay, so I've zoomed down, you can see. We now know exactly what's wrong with this. The transformer has two primaries, 120 volts in series. And then we have the secondary. So we have 58, 28, 28, 58. So effectively, we have one winding, which is like 28, 0, 28. And the other one is 58, 0, 58. And the zero is the common terminal. So I think we can say for sure the two yellow wires are providing power to the amplifier for the horn speaker and the two red ones are providing power for the main amplifier and we know without a doubt we have shorted turns in the transformer we can see it on the milliometer there's no other explanation for that that i can think of yeah so huh, what can we do with it well i mean there's a product code on it i can have a look whether we can actually get one of these i really don't know the other possibility is to get one off a scrap piece of equipment that has similar ratings close enough to this i might have something but it's quite probable that this one we can't fix just because it's uneconomical to fix it or we can't get the parts so yeah you can't win them all guys but i'll tell you what you can do you can diagnose a fault and you can learn something in the process yeah hope you enjoyed that one short but sweet if you think that i've missed something that i should have thought otherwise Get into the comments below. 
If you like my diagnosis, get into the comments below, and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.